Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineered Math Channel. Sa video na to ay magsasagot tayo ng Math Challenge Questions. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. Okay, so magsasolve ulit tayo ng Math Challenge Questions this time for grade 9. So, meron ulit tayong sets of questions na sasagutan na maaari nating magamit kapag nagre-review tayo kapag sasali tayo sa math contest. Okay, so, number 1 we have if cosine A is equal to negative 3 over 5 and sine B is equal to 7 over 25, A is in the third quadrant and B is in the second quadrant, what is the exact value of cosine A plus B? Okay, so, hanapin daw natin yung cosine A plus B given these conditions. So, di ba, meron tayong sum identity for cosine. So, equal yun saan? Cosine A times cosine B minus sine A times sine B. Okay, so, given tayo ng cosine A, so may value na tayo dito. Given tayo ng sine B, so may value na tayo dito. Ang hahanapin na lang natin itong cosine B tsaka sine A. So, dito muna tayo sa cosine B. So, yung Angle B daw, kapag dinaro natin sa rectangular coordinate system, nasa second quadrant, so somewhere here. Okay? So, pag dinaro natin yung right triangle, ito siya. Tapos, magkakaroon tayo ng coordinate dito na x, y, right? Tapos, given tayo na yung sine B is 7 over 25. So, di ba yung sine is equal yan sa opposite over hypotenuse? So, with respect dito sa triangle, so, ano yung uh, opposite dito sa, ito kasi yung magiging reference angle, let's say, theta. So, pag hinuhan natin yung reference angle dito sa right triangle, ano yung opposite sa kanya? Itong 7, right? Which is yung y coordinate. So, therefore, y, x. So, y is 7. And then, itong hypotenuse, itong nasa baba, which is 25. Okay? So, so pwede natin masolve dito si x by using Pythagorean theorem. So, we have x squared plus y squared equals yung hypotenuse na 25 squared. So, therefore, x is equal to transpose square root of 25 squared minus yung y7. So, sulat ko na 7 squared and then square root. So, therefore, we have x is equal to 25 squared is 625 minus 49 is equal to square root of 625 minus 49 is 576. Perfect square yung 576, right? Ano yun? Square root niya is 24. So, therefore, x is 24. But take note of the sign. Since yung b is nasa second quadrant, yung coordinate ng x is negative. So, therefore, negative 24, comma, 7. C, y positive kasi second quadrant. So, therefore, masasabi natin si cosine b. Di ba yung cosine b equal yun saan? Adjacent over hypotenuse. So, this time, ano adjacent sa theta? Yung reference angle ng beta. X, right? Which is negative 24. Over yung hypotenuse natin na same lang na 25. Okay? So, therefore, tapos na tayo sa cosine B. Doon naman tayo sa another required yung sine A. Diba yung sine A is opposite pa rin over hypotenuse? So, drawing natin sa rectangular coordinate system yung angle A. So, yung angle A daw is in the third quadrant. So, somewhere here. Okay? So, meron ulit siyang x, y na point. So, let's say ito yung reference angle naman natin. So, ito si actual angle A. Tapos, ito yung reference angle natin sa right triangle. Okay. So, given tayo na sine A is ano? Negative 3 over 5. So, we have opposite over hypotenuse. So, by the way, cosine pala. So, di ba given tayo na cosine A is negative 3 over 5. So, sa third quadrant tayo. So, therefore, yung x natin tsaka y ay parehong negative. So, therefore, itong x natin na 3, which is yung adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 3 yan. Okay? So, therefore, ito yung x, ito yung y. So, therefore, yung x natin is negative 3. Kasi siya yung adjacent dito sa theta. Yung hypotenuse natin, ito pa rin yung 5. Okay? So, masasolve naman na natin dito si y. Pythagorean theorem lang din. So, parang y naman is equal to square root of yung hypotenuse na 5 square minus yung 
Isang leg na x which is negative 3 squared, we have square root of 25 minus 9 or square root of 16 or 4. But take note of the sign since nasa third quadrant tayo, yung sign ng y is negative then So negative 4. So therefore, hanapin natin is sign a, right? Substitute na natin. Ano yung opposite dun sa theta which is yung reference ng angle a? This time, yung y na nakuha natin na negative 4. Over yung same hypotenuse na 5. So, therefore, sine A is negative 4 over 5. So, plug in na natin dito sa formula. Yung cosine A, negative 3 over 5. Yung cosine B, yung nakuha natin na negative 24 over 25. Minus yung sine A, yung nakuha natin na negative 4 over 5. Times yung sine B, ito yun yung given, right? Yung 7 over 25. So, masasolve natin to as ito, positive na 3 times negative, negative 3 times negative 24 is what? 72 over 5 times 25 is 125. Then, dito magiging plus na negative times negative. 4 times 7 is 28 over 5 times 25 is 125. So, add lang natin 125 in denominator. Similar naman sila. And then, add natin yung numerator. 72 plus 28 is 100. Or simplify natin to 100 over 125 is GCF na 25. So we have 4 over 5. Okay. Next we have if R and S are the roots of 5x squared minus 4x plus 1 equal 0, find the value of R squared plus RS plus S squared. So apply natin yung formula for sum and product of roots of quadratic equation. So since ito yung roots, yung, yung sum nito is r plus s. Equal yun saan? Negative b over a, right? So, ito si a, ito si b, ito si c. Sa quadratic equation natin. So, substitute natin. Negative of b is negative 4 over yung a is 5. So, we have r plus s is equal to 4 over 5. And then, yung product, r times s is equal to C over A naman. So, ano yung C? 1. Over yung A, 5 pa rin. So, ngayon, try natin i-manipulate. So, R plus S, pag in-square natin to, equal yan saan? Square of a binomial. R squared plus 2RS plus S squared, right? Yung pinapahanap sa atin ay itong R squared plus RS plus S squared. So, minusan natin ngayon ng isa pang RS para equal na siya dito, right? So, therefore, equal pala tong R, S, R squared plus R S plus S squared sa expression na R plus S squared minus R S. Okay? So, di ba meron tayong value ng R plus S tsaka R times S? Substitute natin. So, yung R plus S equal yun sa 4 over 5 and then squared minus yung product nila na R S equal sa 1 fifth. So, we have 4 fifth squared or 16 over 25 minus 1 fifth. So, we have LCD is 25, we have 16 minus 25 divided by 5 is 5, time is 1 is 5. So we have 16 minus 5 is 11 over 25. Okay? So the answer is 11 over 25. Next we have, three circles are externally tangent to each other. Their centers form a triangle with sides 7, 9, and 11. What is the sum of their circumference? Okay, so, meron doon tayong tatlong circle na tangent sa isa't isa. Okay? So, dito yung point of tangent nila. Tapos, meron din tayong center sa bawat circle. Tapos, nag-form doon tayo ng triangle by connecting the centers of the circle. So, yung isang side daw ng triangle, let's say ito ay 7, then yung other side ito ay 9, then yung other side ito ay 11. So, Let's represent variable dun sa bawat radius ng circle. So, let's say dito sa first circle ay x. So, x din to. Then, dito sa second circle ay y. So, y din to. Then, dito sa third circle ay z. So, z din to. So, therefore, makakabuo tayo ng equation. So, para dito sa side na to, we have x plus y is equal to 7. Tapos, we have dito naman sa x plus z is equal to 11. And then, dito naman sa y plus z is equal to 9. Okay? So, paano natin masasolve ngayon itong x, y, at z given these three equations? 
So, manipulate lang natin. Try natin i-add itong tatlong equation. So, we have x plus x is 2x plus y plus y is 2y plus z plus c is 2z equals 7 plus 11 plus 9 is 27. Tapos, factor out natin itong 2. So, we have 2 times quantity x plus y plus z is equal to 27. Divide both sets by 2. We have x plus y plus z is equal to 27 divided by 2 is 13.5. So, this will be our equation 4. So, equation 1, 2, 3. Ngayon, para masalab natin itong bawat value ng x, y, at z, pwede natin isubtract itong bawat equation dito. So, let's say itong equation 1, subtract natin dito. So, x plus y equals 7. So, minus. So, cancel itong dalawang x saka y, z na lang. So, z is equal to 13.5 minus 7 or 6.5. Same as dito sa equation 2, subtract din natin itong x plus z equals 11. So, x plus y plus z is equal to 13.5 minus x plus z equals 11. x plus z is equal to 11. So, cancel itong x saka z. Matitira si y, which is 13.5 minus 11 or 2.5. And then last, x plus y plus z equals 13.5. This time, isubtract naman natin itong equation 3. Yung y plus z equals 9. So, y plus z equals 9. So, cancel si y plus z. Pag sinubtract, matitira si x, which is equal to 13.5 minus 9 or 4.5 okay okay so therefore ito yung tatlong radius ng circle 4.5 6.5 tsaka 2.5 so circumference yung hinahanap yung sum ng circumference ng tatlong circle diba we have circumference is 2 pi r okay so therefore we have for 4.5, we have 2 pi times 4.5 plus 6.5, 2 pi times 6.5 plus 2.5, 2 pi times 2.5. So, we have factor out natin tong 2 pi. We have 4.5 plus 6.5 plus 2.5, right? Or 2 pi times 4.5 plus 6.5 plus 2.5 is 13.5. So, 2 pi times 13.5 is... 27 pi. So, therefore, ito yung sum ng circumference ng tatlong circle. 27 pi. Okay? Next, we have car A is at P and is moving due east away from P at 60 kph. At the same instant, car B is 100 km due north of P and is moving towards P at 80 kph. If their speeds are maintained, how far apart are the two cars after 2 hours? Okay, so draw natin. So, let's say meron daw tayong point P dito. So, meron car A na going east palayo sa point P at a rate of 60 kph. Tapos, meron daw car B dito which is due north sa P. Ang distance nito ay 10 kilometers. Sorry, 100 kilometers. So, ito si car B. Tapos, nagta-travel siya at the rate of 80 kph. So, after 2 hours, gaano raw kalayo yung dalawang cars sa isa't isa? So, pwede natin gamitin dito yung speed is equal to distance times time. So, solve natin yung distance. We have speed times time is equal distance. So, for sa car, so para dun sa car A, since yung time natin is 2, substitute natin yung time na 2. Therefore, yung matatravel niyang distance after 2 hours is Yung rate niya na 60 kph times time na 2 is 120 kilometers. So, ito ay 120 kilometers. So, let's say yung car B may speed siya na 80 kph. Multiply natin sa lumipas na oras na 2 hours. So, we have 160 kilometers. So, therefore, nalagpasan niya na yung distance niya na 100 kilometer nung nag-travel siya after 2 hours. So, around here na siya. So, 60. Right? Kasi ito, na-travel niya na itong 100 km. So, lumagpas na siya sa point P. So, meron na siyang 60 km na na-travel passing through P. So, ang tanong, ano ngayon yung distance ng dalawang car sa isa't isa? So, therefore, gamit tayo ng Pythagorean theorem. Kasi ito yung distance nila, right? Nakabuo tayo ng right triangle. So, we have 
ito ay 60, ito ay 120. So, itong distance nila na D, let's say D, is equal siya saan? Square root nung squares nung bawat legs na to. So, 60 square plus 120 square. So, we have square root of 60 square is 3,600 plus 120 square is 14,400. Okay, so, factor out natin itong 3,000. 1,600. So, marang 1 plus 144 divided by 3,600 is 4, right? Square root. Tapos, lalabas ngayon itong 3,600 kasi perfect square siya. Square root ng 3,600 is 60. Square root of 1 plus 4. So, we have 60 square root of 1 plus 4 or 5. So, therefore, ito yung distance nila. 60 square root of 5 kilometers. Okay? Next, we have The y-intercept of two perpendicular lines are b and negative 2. The x-intercept are 3 and a respectively. If a plus b is equal to 15, find the slope of both lines. So, gamit, gamitin natin yung slope-intercept form ng line. So, dun muna tayo sa first line. So, let's say yung first line ay may equation na y equals mx plus b. So, tama kasi yung y-intercept niya daw ay b. Tapos yung slope niya, let's say m muna. So, para to sa equation nung line 1. Then, yung line 2, y is equal, let's say, dahil perpendicular line sila, yung slope niya ay negative reciprocal nitong m. So, negative 1 over m, x. Tapos, yung y-intercept niya raw ay negative 2. So, plus negative 2 or minus 2 na lang. So, equation nung line 2. Okay? Tapos, meron tayong given na x-intercept are 3 and a respectively. So, pag sinapsitit natin yung x-intercept na 3, so, di ba, meron tayong point na 3 comma 0 doon. So, doon muna tayo sa equation 1. So, pag sinapsitit natin yung 3 comma 0 sa equation, we have 0 is equal to m times 3 plus b. So, we have 0 is equal to 3m plus b. Okay? And then, doon naman sa pangalawang equation, we have x-intercept naman niya daw ay a. So, meron tayong a comma 0 na point. Sapsitit din natin dito. So, Substitute din natin dito sa equation ng line 2. So, we have 0 is equal to negative 1 over m, this time a, minus 2. So, we have 0 is equal to negative a over m, minus 2. So, multiply natin both sides by m. Para mawala yung denominator, we have 0 is equal to negative a minus 2m. Distribute. Or simply... Multiply na lang natin both sides by negative 1. We have a plus 2m equals 0. Okay? So, add natin tong equation na to sa equation na to. So, we have 3m plus b is equal to 0. Parang a plus b plus 5m is equal to 0, right? But given tayo na a plus b is what? 15. So, therefore, substitute natin 15 plus 5m is equal to 0. So, transpose natin si 15, 5m is equal to negative 15, divide both sides by 5, we have m is equal to negative 15 over 5 or negative 3. So, therefore, m is negative 3 and the other slope for the line perpendicular to this line is negative reciprocal line niya, which is 1 third, right? So, therefore, the slopes of the two lines are negative 3 and 1 third. Okay? So, putulin ko muna dito yung part 1 for grade 9 math challenge questions natin. So, so abangan nyo lang yung next upload ko for the part 2 of grade 9 math challenge questions. Okay? So, that's it for this video. So, sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panunood.